Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hey, brothers and sisters. We are Hebrew Readers Church. We welcome you all and hope you all are enjoying this Shabbat day and been enjoying the lessons and opportunities we've had to grow in Ahaya, Awalahayim, and Adonayache, and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. Today we are going to be discussing a very important topic, seeing as though we are going into the end times of the world. This lesson is to look at the scriptural evidence and understand the signs to substantiate the time frame we are in. We will also look at the events that shall come to pass here in the end of this world. So, firstly, a year is 364 days. Can you read uh, the book of Jubilees, chapter 6, verse 30 to 32? Sure, so, the book of Jubilees, chapter 6, verse 30. And all the days for the commandment will be two and fifty weeks of days. And these will make the entire year complete. So two and fifty weeks of days. Fifty-two times seven is three hundred and sixty-four. This is what a true year is according to Ahaya's timeline on the heavenly tables. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets, and there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. So when we look at the Hebrew records, we can know we judge years by 364 days. Okay. And they will not disturb his time from his days and from his feast. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. All right, so Ahe has been gracious to give us that understanding in these times. You can visit the website to download the Hebrew calendar. Now, secondly, there is only 6,000 years in this world before it ends, and then Yahshua will reign for a thousand years in his kingdom. When look at uh, Barnabas chapter 15, verse 3 to 4, please. Barnabas chapter 15, verse 3. Of the Sabbath, he speaketh in the beginning of the creation. And Elohim made the works of his hands in six days, and he ended on the seventh day, and rested on it, and he hallowed it. Give heed, children, what this meaneth. He endeth in six days, he meaneth this that in 6,000 years Ahaya shall bring all things to an end, for the day with him signifieth a thousand years. So there we see, it's 6,000 years, that's going to be the completion of this world before Yahshua's kingdom comes. Okay. And this he himself bears me witness, saying, Behold, the day of Ahaya shall be as a thousand years. Therefore, children, in six days, that is, in 6,000 years, everything shall come to an end. Right. The 6,000 years were divided into jubilees. A jubilee is every 50 years. If you can read uh, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8 to 10, please. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8. And thou shalt number even seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seventh Sabbath of years shall be unto thee 49 years. So seven and seven is 49, okay. Then shalt thou call the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. So you see the fiftieth year is the jubilee. Okay. So now Ahaya spoke of the allotted time in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3. And Ahiah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. He was referring to Jubilees. One hundred and twenty times fifty is six thousand. So that let us know that it really is six thousand years in this world, and that's it. And then Yahshua's kingdom comes. Can you read Barnabas chapter 15, verse 5? And he rested on the seventh day. Right. This he meaneth, when his son shall come, it shall abolish the time of the lawless one, and shall judge the unholy, and shall change the sun and the moon and the stars. Then shall he truly rest on the seventh day. And you can confirm that that thousand year reign for Yahweh when you read Revelation chapter 20 verse 4, it showed that the seventh day is a thousand years too. Now we understand the entirety of the time. 
Now we're going to look at what time frame we are living in now. Uh, Baruch was shown in part how things would be in the last 49 years of time in this world before Yache comes back in the sky. The 49 years is known as seven weeks in Baruch's book because a week is seven years and seven times seven is 49. Ahaya showed him the 12 parts which are signs that shall be happening in the 49 years at the time of the end of this world. He left signs for our guidance because he knew we would transgress and confound ourselves by not following his calendar and following the moon calendar of the Gentiles. That was in Jubilee chapter 6, verse 34 to 38. He knew that we would go astray. So he gave us the calendar back now, which we're thankful for. So we will look at Baruch to get back on track to see, according to what was prophesied and the signs that were shown, what time frame we are living in now. Um, can we start in Second Baruch chapter 26, verse 1, and then chapter 27, verse 1. All right, Second Baruch chapter 26, verse 1. And I answered and said, Will that tribulation which is to be continued a long time, and will that necessity embrace many years? So he's asking in the end times, is it going to be long or what is it going to be like? Okay. Chapter 27, verse 1. And he answered and said unto me, Into twelve parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. So they are an appointed time for each part of the twelve parts. Okay. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 28, verse 2, please, so we can see how much that appointed time is? For the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts a week of seven weeks. Right. The parts are signs. So every seven years, there will be two parts. Seven years divided into two parts is 3.5 years per part. So that gives us three and a half years appointed time per part for the 12 parts. Now hearken and understand. Three and a half years times 12 parts is actually 42 years, which still leaves seven years remaining to complete the 49 years. The signs within the last seven years were revealed to Daniel after Baruch. Hence, the last seven years was not entirely revealed to Baruch in his section of his book. Now, looking at what was shown to Baruch lets us get a glimpse of what the 12 parts will look like so we can identify what time frame we are in. Then we will look at the book of Daniel to get further understanding of what the last seven years will look like after the 12 parts. And we're going to look in 2 Baruch chapter 27, read that whole chapter, and we're going to tie it in with what Yache was telling because his apostles also asked him what would be the signs of his coming. So we see confirmation that the book of Baruch is true and also understand that Yache was really foretelling of the end times for real. Uh, let's, we're going into 2 Baruch chapter 27 here. Uh, second Baruch chapter 27 verse 2. In the first part there shall be beginning of commotions. So there will be the first part of three and a half years of instability, wars and rumors of wars. Okay. And you can look at Luke chapter 21 verse 9 to see that Yahche foretold of the same things. Let's continue Baruch uh, chapter 27 verse 3. And in the second part there shall be slaying of the great ones. All right. Now in the second part, there will be three and a half years of the slayings of people of renown, like celebrities, famous people dying, things of that nature. All right. Continue. And in the third part, the fall of many by death. The third part was three and a half years of pestilences, diseases, and etc. One can tie that into Luke chapter 21, verse 11. And let's continue Baruch uh, 27, verse 5. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword. Now, the fourth part of the sin of the sword is of wars among countries, people versus people, race versus race, all around the world. And you can tie that in with Mark chapter 13, verse 8, continuing in uh, Baruch. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain. All right. And Yache spoke of that in Luke chapter 21, verse 11 as well. All right. Continue. And in the sixth part. Earthquakes and terrors. Now, this sixth part of earthquake and terrors, terror is interesting because the word terror, it means a person or thing that causes extreme fear. 
So this can this can range in many different things that cause fear. And particularly in the scriptures, Yahche spoke of it. Can you read Luke 21 and 11? Sure, Luke 21 verse 11. And the great earthquake shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. And when you look at Mark chapter 13 verse 8, it lets you know that all these things that would be these parts, these are just the beginning of sorrows, as Yahche said in Mark 13 and 8. Now, Continuing in Second Baruch chapter 27, there's one section missing that Ahaya, may he be gracious to reveal what this part is referring to, but we'll continue on the eighth part in Second Baruch chapter 27 verse 9. And in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of Shittim. Now this eighth part is three and a half years of a multitude of ghosts and the appearance of demons. Let's continue. And in the ninth part, the fall of fire. Now the ninth part is nuclear weapons. Continuing to the tenth part, verse 11 says, And in the tenth part, rapine and much oppression. Rapine is the violent seizure and carrying off of another's property. And oppression is prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. So that's what would be coming to pass in the tenth part. Continue verse 12, chapter 27. And in the eleventh part, wickedness and unchastity. Now this, in the eleventh part, then we will see wickedness, which is bad or evil, naturally or morally, no law of truth. It's lawlessness. And unchastity, is, it means to be not chaste, not virtuous, not pure, lasciviousness, lustful, wanton, lewd, body, which now body means uh, to be humorously indecent, illicit, and inappropriate humor, immorality, and reckless. Now, it's interesting because we have all noticed how, as we've gotten close in these times, the world is becoming more, um, it's become more body. It's lawless. The immorality is a high where your television, they say whatever they want. The jokes, like comedians have become more crude in their jokes. Uh, movies have become more promiscuous and immoral in what is in the film industry. What you hear on the radio, they, it's, they curse on the radio stations now commonly. And then the music is filled with provocative, promiscuous, and lawless behavior and speech. As opposed to before, it was a little more, they had a little more moral. Reserved. Yeah, right. Even, and now as we're getting close, it's just getting more and more reckless. So we see how, and that's the 11th part. Notice we're getting closer to the end, and you see how things are getting worse and worse, right? Now, can you read uh, 2 Baruch 27 and 13 so we can see what the 12th part will look like? And in the 12th part, confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. So the 12th part, which is three and a half years before the last seven years, is the mingling together of everything that was said before. And we could identify with everything that was said before because everything is happening from the, the slain of great ones. We've seen different celebrities dying here and there, earthquakes here and there, rumors of wars here and there, famines here, terrors here, landslide over here, there's a flood over here, tsunami here. All these, the attacks of Shittim and these specters, people are truly being attacked by demons. It's actually happening with the demonic activity that's going on in different places with the witches and things of that nature. Gun shootings and right. people being overtaken by right, cause, Yeah, absolutely. And the wickedness and unchastity, it's, it's interesting that that was the 11th part because that has been picking up more in these times. Now, can you read 2 Baruch chapter 27, verse 14, please? 2 Baruch 27 and 14. Mm -hmm. For these parts of that time are reserved and shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. So now he was letting you know, by the 12th part, the rest of the time in the world, all the things that were mentioned before, they're going to be mingling amongst each other. They're not going to be um, set in order. It's going to be one thing's going to do this. There'll be an attack of shit I'm here. Uh, somebody will shoot somebody here being overtaken by a demon. There'll be an earthquake over there. Then there'll be a terror here. And then there'll be a celebrity dying. Like it's going to be complete confusion. So many things happening all in different places and in different ways. And let's continue seeing what it will cause. For some shall leave out some of their own 
and receive and instead from others and some complete their own and that of others. So you see how it's just everything mingled together. So that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days that this is the consummation of time. And it was mingled so that we would be confused. Everything happening all together so we would just see it as it's nothing going on. This is the normal way life is. Right. Not realizing we're actually in the end of the world. This is the consummation. So notice there are still seven more years after that 12th part. And this lets us know that the whole seven years will have the parts mingling together to confound those who don't understand. Yet Ahaya is giving grace, because what does uh, Second Group chapter 28 verse 1 say? Nevertheless, whosoever understands shall be wise. And so not all will not know. Ahaya would give wisdom to some to actually realize this is the consummation of the times. The mingling together shall continue unto the end of the whole world, and that is one way to know we are within the consummation, because everything is mingled together now. We can confirm these ten and a half years of the consummation of the times will be mingled together. So that the wicked won't understand, because Yahweh told the same thing to Daniel when Daniel asked him, when will the end be? You can read Daniel chapter 12, verse 8 uh, to 10, please. Daniel chapter 12, verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Adonis, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So all the signs are mingled to confuse the world and let the wise know we are in the consummation of the times, just like it was told to Baruch. So now we understand thus far, we are at some point within these last ten and a half years of the consummation of the times, by evidence of all the parts being mingled together. The next question is, how will we know when we are nearing the end, seeing as though we still don't know exactly what year we are in within the consummation? The signs were shown to Daniel to know when we have made it to the last 1335 days of the consummation. Can you read Daniel chapter 12, verse 11 to 12, please? Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. And from the time that the deadly sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. All right, can you read verse 12? Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Okay, and we've seen that from the time that daily sacrifice is taken away, to get to that time of the blessed time is 1335 days. Okay, so both signs, the daily sacrifice being taken away, and the abomination of desolation being set up shall come to pass at some point in the consummation of the times. When these events come to pass, at some point you will have confirmation that there are only 1335 days after the events have been performed. Now, the third sign that Yahweh had gave the understanding on when he came on the earth and then to John in the book of Revelations is the preaching of the true gospel which will commence at the same time that the beast starts his authority for that 1274 days to make war with the saints because when we look at revelation chapter 11 verse 2 and 3 it gives understanding of this revelation chapter 11 verse 2 and the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they thread under foot forty and two months. They're going to tread it under foot forty and two months. That's twelve hundred and seventy-four days. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So when the twelve hundred and seventy-four days of the holy city being trod under foot commences, the two witnesses will be given power for twelve hundred and sixty days to preach as a sign and a witness. So to make sure it's understood, from that first day the beast gets his power, the two witnesses are going to be given power by Yahweh to preach the true gospel. 
until the 1260th day of the beast total 1274 days and it would be a judite and a levite sent like isaiah and jeremiah according to second ezra chapter 2 verse 17 to 48 to bring the jews and gentiles unto yache it was even told to levi in the testament of levi chapter 2 verse 11 that and by thee and judah shall ahaya appear among men saving every race of men is going to be just like the exodus the two witnesses are sent to preach just like moses and aaron was sent to preach that the people might believe so you can see how the forefathers understood and we're going to also do a separate lesson on understanding the two witnesses specifically we'll just do an overview right now this gospel for a witness must be preached before the end of the world comes you can read matthew chapter 24 verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So then that lets us know that after that gospel is preached for that 1260 days that was spoken of in Revelation chapter 11 verse 3, that the two witnesses shall be given power to prophesy and be clothed in sackcloth for the 1260 days, then we're really at the end. That's when things are going to get really bad. Now we have the three signs to know when we have entered into the midst of the last week of this world and when we are in the time of the last 13, 35 days. You have the daily sacrifice being taken away, then you have the abomination of desolation being set up. That's the second sign, which is an idol altar being set up to stand where it should not stand, which is on the altar of Allahayim in the holy place. And the third sign is the preaching of the true everlasting gospel by the two witnesses once they receive power from Yache after the daily sacrifice and the abomination of desolation being set up has been performed. Those first two signs will take place and after that Satan will give power unto the beast to receive his authority and then the two witnesses will receive power from Yache. So that's an overview of letting us know we are within the consummation of the times we're gonna go more into it in the next video all right ciao ciao with the challenge